Welcome to this next episode of YouTube where we are discussing the interpretation of behavior and one of the reasons why we do film is to provide background footage for the Wolf Ethogram which uh, catalogs behavior but it also gives us a sense of what's going on within the dynamics of the Wolf exhibit and we look at it every week and as we process it for YouTube we get some sense of what kind of behavioral issues we might be addressing and this uh, footage starts out with Aiden and Denali in some interesting behavior. The sled dogs were back, so that created a little bit of a scenario that I'll talk about later with the retired wolves. But it brought a little bit more stimulus. And what we see, again, is typical midwinter kind of a little antagonistic behavior where Denali is doing a little bit of testing behavior. He goes into a play bow here and then had a little bark there. I don't know if you caught that. That bark is a little bit more intense than just a standard play bow. Uh, then he follows through with what we call an invite chase. And an invite chase is kind of go up again and uh, kind of a little springboard to try to get to another wolf to chase him. And certainly Aiden always obliges. So that, that play bow is social. But yet the fact that there was a bark with it means that it was a little bit more intense. And a bark is kind of a warning. Uh, and no doubt... Uh, when the sled dogs are around, Aiden's a little bit more anxious and that anxiety manifests itself into a little bit more dominance. And so that's what Denali was responding to. Overall, though, these two individuals are getting along quite well and we've not had any real issues. There he goes again. Play bow, bark, invite chase. And uh, you will see plenty of chasing um, that goes on. But... The other things that we look at is in tail postures. How do the wolves carry their tails? RLUs, and you see here Aiden doing a raised leg urination. That's a, a sign of dominance. And one thing about captivity uh, in the wild, an RLU might be strictly something that higher ranking or breeding pair adults do. Uh, here in captivity, we, we don't see that rule as strict. It certainly does mean confidence, and we see the difference between a lower ranking wolf that is not displaying uh, a high raised leg urination mark versus the more the subordinate wolf who is is uh, doing a squat urination etc but but we um, again like I say we we prepare these YouTubes but and and we certainly appreciate people watching them but this is something that is beneficial for wolf care as well to be able to kind of get a sense of what's normal and what's going on and what's kind of the situation in this clip uh, Denali is is again trying to engage Aiden who's by the camera operator trying to solicit attention from the wolf care staff and he tries and he keeps trying so he does that play bow pounce and bite chase Aiden rushes him and he comes right back so this is a little bit uh, maybe uh, brought on by the fact that Denali's not getting as much attention so there may be a little anxiety that's coming in to play here because he does not get as much attention from staff uh, but during this clip, we actually were, did uh, have some time with, with uh, Denali. And obviously when this is going on, especially the bark, that's going to trigger some interest from the retired pack and from Grizzer uh, because there's, that bark is, is an alarm and that's something that they you know, are keying into. What's going on over there that's making those wolves alarm? So as we said, a little bit of follow behavior. That's what's coming up next. Uh, but notice the tail wag with Denali. It's, it's, it's still got a social component. And even though you'll hear them um, do a growl and scuffle and threat display up into the woods there, uh, the social, the fact that there's a lot of tail wagging um, tells us that um, it's not as problematic as people viewing it might, might seem. Um, if Tanali's tail were tucked and he were, his ears were flat back in a threat display, we'd be more concerned about it. Uh, so that, that tail wagging, and again, that can be agonistic, but in in most cases it's kind of a social engagement. And, and Denali, rightfully so, is not getting as much attention, so he wants social engagement. We're seeing him go to Oscar more often because um, uh, Aiden does allow him to interact with Oscar without blocking him at all. So we're seeing a lot of, of Denali-Oscar contact, Denali rubbing up against the fence for Oscar. But... So that's, that's what's going on here in the exhibit pack, and, I, and then we saw multiple occurrences of it while we were filming. Um, again, Denali trying to engage and Aiden responding with a little bit of a chase. But for the most part, like I said, these two, first of all, Denali is faster, and there's no doubt that Denali is going to be able to elude Aiden no matter what happens. Uh, but 
Aiden's not putting a lot of effort into it. And you can see a, a test a little bit or a little bit of a charge and then he kind of backs off. Hackle response would be another behavior that we're looking for and we're not seeing it. Um, that would tell me that, again, there's a little bit more anxiety from Denali. Saw his tail lower there and his ears flatter back in that last little chase scene, but they were not by any means something where Denali's showing any fear behavior. So I would expect that this is going to wane. And here Denali tries to follow Aiden, and Aiden has no part of it. He has no desire to have Denali following him. Um, and so that constant turnaround and, and monitor uh, is, a, is a common behavior. So one of the other things that we try to do is, you know, when they're doing things, we'll look to the surveillance camera and see what Grizzer is up to. Is Grizzer responding to it so we can look at timing? But for the most part, Grizzer is not really engaging too much uh, when the other wolves engage, with the exception of earlier this week, um, there were some issues in retirement that he was stimulated by, and we saw some... Um, actually, Grizzly kind of uh, climbing the back tree behind his den and actually chewing on a branch because of some issues going on in retirement. So uh, no doubt he's connected. And, and one of the bonuses of the way this habitat was designed was that he could feel part of those packs without having to be in with them. And, and that's uh, where, you know, having in the, in the middle, in between, you know, does, does provide him stimulus and engagement. So other than that, uh, there isn't anything relatively new in Grizzard's enclosure. He killed a raven earlier this week, and ravens have been uh, pretty active. Uh, we did feed uh, Shadow Malik a deer carcass, and that blood on his neck is from rolling on a deer carcass. So as we've mentioned in previous YouTubes, we're starting to give them larger volumes of meat um, so that they can compete with each other, and Shadow's been having no problem getting a, a, a good amount of food, where in the previous in previous year we've had trouble with shadows confidence levels and now those are starting to increase and and that's what you see so anyone who who emailed in about uh, you know Malik being injured he wasn't injured he was just rolling on things so that is a uh, shadows demonstrating an RLU and a followed by a scrape there and that's pretty common and then we're starting to see again some excitement shadow goes into an invite chase with Malik and does a little bit of a whirl and, and runs around, although Malik didn't chase him. Malik was standing with me and watching him. Uh, but, but Shadow gets excited as well, and, and, and his advice chase is a little bit different. Um, he doesn't go down into a play bow nearly as much. He kind of just springs off his front feet and then stops and does a face-off with Malik, and Malik's averting his gaze a little bit. And again, Shadow will typically, if he wants to show some status, move right in and do a chin rest on that mid-back. And Malik's not having any part of it. Uh, he's really holding his own, um, trying to engage. Shadow does an anal scent gland sniff, and uh, Malik does a whirl there saying, you know, um, show me a little respect, buddy. So then Malik does a little bit of inguinal uh, investigation, and um, Shadow spins and does a head rest, does a... Uh, again, a play bow, which uh, is typically the invite chase, and uh, you're typically followed by a chase. So then what happens is that Oscar um, comes on site, and then it's time for Oscar watching. And uh, whatever they were doing, they'll disengage and watch Oscar, which is a great, great stimulus and, and a great contrast. So I wanted to reference um, what happened when the sled dogs came. Shadow got a little excited um, the last time and had a lot of pacing and that uh, caused a little bit of anxiety. So we did uh, see some change in that uh, where we knew he was stressed before but he got a little anxious. This clip here is showing wolf care leaving, differing responses. Oscar just watches as the wolf care leave, the wolves howl. So I'll let you listen to that in the background. Oscar does an RLU over by Grizzer's enclosure and then does a face wipe in this fresh snow. Then does a roll on back and then does his own grooming behavior and then a shake to get rid of the snow. What's interesting about this clip is that Oscar 
He is so used to being around wolves. It's to the point where he's just fits in extremely well. He's extremely comfortable with them, and they're extremely comfortable with him. They don't actually um, don't even really um, communicate much, uh, meaning that Oscar used to bark and get stimulated when they howled, and now he's just pretty much accepted it. So, so that's it from Wolf Carol, um, and we are in the midst of warm days, um, 20 to 30 degrees um, for average temperatures, and that's probably what got Shadow a little bit hot. Um, agitated by the sled dogs, pacing a little bit, he got a little overheated, and uh, he's fine now, but definitely was kind of a rough day on on Thursday. So that's it, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.